Hello and welcome to Cards by Kendra. Today I'm excited to share the 15 cards that I created with the March of 2023 Crafty Courtyard Kit by Pink and Main. A few days ago I shared an unboxing video that shows all of the contents of the kit. So if you missed that video I will link that above and in the description box below. As of the date of this video, this kit is still available to purchase in the month of March as part of the monthly subscription. Even though the website says to receive this kit, you must subscribe by the 14th of the month. You can still purchase it through the end of the month or until it sells out. And if they have any left over after the month ends, they will be moved to the past boxes and extras page on the Pink and Main website. Your subscription will change to the next month's box on the first. Now, if you'd like to purchase, I will have links to everything down in the description box. These are affiliate links, which means if you make a purchase, I earn a small commission at no extra cost to you. This helps to support my channel. So if you plan on doing some crafty shopping, I hope you'll consider using my links. Now, this is the paper pad and cardstock that comes in this month's kit. The paper pad has 24 double-sided sheets. And since I'm using the cutting templates and card sketches from Kendra's Card Challenge 9, I've selected six coordinating pattern papers. If you're not familiar with my quarterly card challenges, I will link a video above and below so you can get all of the details. But it's a free printable that you can download on my website that shows you how to make 15 cards using six sheets of pattern paper, plus other cardstock and supplies. You can win prizes for uploading your cards, including a prize pack from Pink and Main, who is one of the prize sponsors. I will link where you can download the free printable below, and I'll also put a link to the introduction video where I show and explain how to cut the six sheets of pattern paper. Now, in addition to the contents of the kit, there's a few extra things that you'll need to make these cards, such as a scoreboard, a paper trimmer, a die cutting machine if you plan to use the dies, some colored ink, some extra card stock for the card bases, and some ad adhesive. Here you see me cutting this plaid pattern, which is what I've assigned to paper F. The Challenge 9 introduction video shows how to cut all of the papers, but I figured I would show me cutting the last sheet since this has that diagonal cut in it. But you'll want to measure and mark with a pencil and then cut at a diagonal. And all of this is on the printable. But once all of the pattern papers have been cut, you'll want to sort all of the pieces into 15 different piles. I like to use cellophane bags that are numbered to help keep me organized. You'll then take the matching colored cardstock from the kit and cut all of the layers according to the measurements on the card sketches shown on the printable. Now this next step you can do one of two ways. You can figure out what type of decorative element you want on each of your card as you put it together. Or you can figure it out ahead of time and get all of the stamping done at once, which is what I decided to do here. I'm taking the birthday theme stamp set from the kit and I'm placing the main images and the sentiments spread out onto a sheet of the ice rink cardstock that was in the kit. And I've cut that in half and I've placed it inside of my misty stamping platform. And since these are new stamps, I'm using my fingers to help rub off some of that stickiness that happens from manufacturing. Since this stamp set has layering stamps, you really want to think about the colors you use to stamp these out. The top of the cake image has a section of frosting that will be solid. So rather than using black ink, I'm using the pink and main teal colored ink called Lakeside to stamp out all of these images to start with. I like to apply pressure using my air hockey table pusher and I'm stamping this a few times to make sure all of the parts of the images have a good impression. And then after cleaning off these stamps really well, I do the exact same thing except this time I use the pink ink and this color is called dress shop. I've placed the teal images back in the misty, and now I'm selecting and trying to line up the layering images on top of what's already been stamped. And I ink this first layer in pink. And then after stamping these, I added some of the other layering stamps, and I stamped most of those in green, but I did stamp the flames of the candles in yellow. Now, if you're not really big into using layering stamps, you can stamp these out and just color them in, which is what I decided to do with the sheet of pink stamped images. 
and I just found some matching Copic markers that are close to the pink and main colors. So I just colored in some of the white parts where I didn't line up the stamps exactly over here on this teal page. And for the pink, I used the Copic marker RV17. And then I also used C3 for the gray cake plate. Next, I cut out all of the images using the coordinating dies that came in the kit. And I did that off camera and then I sorted them into the different cellophane bags for each of the card sketches. I also used some rectangle dies to cut out sections of some of my bottom layer mats so that I could maximize my supplies and use the colored card stock from those center rectangles to cut out the word celebrate using the word and shadow dies that are included with the coordinating dies. Now, as I make each card, I will show each of the card sketches on the screen. And just for your information, I have sped this video up six times. Overall, it took me around four hours to complete this set of cards. Card sketch one is pretty simple. You'll layer the two patterns and cut colored mats for each of the pieces. The strips are one quarter inch wide and they cross at the bottom and I'm adding a pink cupcake. And to give this some dimension, I'm using this gigantic roll of foam tape here that you can purchase from Pink and Main. Y'all, there's 108 feet of foam tape on this roll and it's only $20. I'm just wondering how long it's going to take me to use all of this foam. I feel like it's going to last me a lifetime, but it's definitely a bargain. But anyway, I decided to color in the cupcake liner to match the lime green color and I'm using Copic Color YG25. And then to finish off the card, I added three pink glitter enamel dots, which also came in the kit. And to give it some extra sparkle, I added some Stickles glitter glue to the sprinkles on the frosting. And this is card sketch number one. For card sketch two, rather than making this a landscape card, I decided to turn it so that it's a portrait and goes up and down. And I also decided not to make the banner shape and I just left it as a square and instead of using just a plain white piece of cardstock inside the square I brought in another sheet of pattern paper from the paper pad and I originally thought I was going to use the confetti side but I ended up using the lime green side to match the background layer I just thought that it was a little bit more appealing to the eye and then rather than popping up the images with foam tape on this card, I decided just to leave them flat. And then to finish off this card, I picked out three different sizes of teal sequins from the sequin mix that comes in the kit. And this finishes off card number two. For card three, the sketch calls for one strip of pattern paper right in the middle. Normally I do an embossed panel for this card sketch, but I decided to pull in another sheet of pattern paper from the paper pad for the three and three quarter inch by five inch panel. I chose the one that says celebrate and I layered it onto more of that teal cardstock. It's called Lakeside. Now I was struggling with which side of the strip I wanted to use. I really liked them both, but I decided to go with the tiny polka dot pattern to break up some of the busyness from the background. And of course, to keep all of the pieces level, I added some scrap cardstock to the back. And you'll see me do this quite a bit throughout this video. And then for that banner piece, I used the pink tiny polka dot pattern and I cut that into a banner. I usually just cut a slit a little bit up from the bottom, just a tiny bit up to the middle. And then I cut from the corners to that middle cut. And I added the happy birthday sentiment and the party hat. And I popped both of those up with some foam tape. And then I finished the card off with some glitter enamel dots in teal along the right edge just as it's shown on the card sketch and this is card number three now for card four this one has two rectangle panels that are kind of offset 
So rather than just having that back piece be just a plain teal piece of cardstock, I decided to use the embossing folder that came in the kit and I placed it kind of to the left so that it's not really centered and that burst pattern will be kind of coming off the cake that will go on the top left of the pattern paper. I layered both rectangles in green and added my scrap strips to keep things level. And for this one, I used the Celebrate Word and Shadow die from the coordinating dies in the kit, and I cut the word from teal cardstock and the shadow piece from purple cardstock. And I glued this kind of offset below that green strip toward the bottom. And then I added the cake in the top left corner, and I finished it off with some Stickles glitter glue on the flames. And then I added some glitter enamel dots, and this is card number four. For card five, this is probably the simplest card of the whole bunch. It's just a strip that's layered in green that's glued directly onto the card base. And then a square piece is glued toward the top right where the right hand edge of the square is the same distance from the edge of the card as the strip is on the left. I added the happy birthday sentiment that's stamped in teal to the top part of the square and the present toward the bottom left corner as it's shown on the sketch. And I popped this up with some foam tape. And then to finish off the card, I added two clusters of colorful sequ sequins, three on each corner. And then off camera, I did add those three glitter enamel dots to the bottom right hand corner as shown on the sketch. And this is card number five. Now for card six, I really struggled with which side of the pattern paper to use for that back panel. I originally planned to use the striped pattern, but then as I got to look in at all of the other elements that I had for the card, I opted to go with the pink polka dots pattern since the two banners that are also that polka dot pattern are going to be placed on the rectangle piece. So I just went with it. I really like the stripe pattern though. <laughs> I glued down the pink cardstock on top of the teal and then I cut the, the banners and I placed the happy birthday sentiment that I stamped in teal. I scooted that over to the left and then the pink present is going to be glued directly below the sentiment. And then I finished off this card with some sequins that I kind of scattered around the sentiment and the present. And this finishes off card number six. For card sketch seven, it calls for a wider strip across the top and a skinnier one across the bottom. So of course I went with the pink and teal, two of my favorite colors. The middle piece says to use a decorative border, but I figured since I was putting the celebrate word die cut there, I didn't need to worry about it since it would be covered up anyway. But I did glue down a strip of teal cardstock to separate it on the part where it's showing. I added a pink cake in place of the circle and again added some glitter to the flames on the candles. And I added three small enamel dots on the far left part of the teal strip that was showing. And this is card sketch number seven. For card eight, this one has a pattern paper panel and then two small rectangles that will be glued onto a layer of solid cardstock. And the inner edges will be hidden behind the center focal point to make it look like a long strip. But rather than using the shape on the sketch, I opted to go with a pink rectangle that's just wide enough to fit the Celebrate Word die cut. I used a scrap piece of cardstock between the plaid rectangles to keep everything level. 
and then once I added the pink piece I realized that the edges of the pink panel were going to be lifted up just a little bit from the card and so I had to add some skinnier scraps underneath that it's kind of an afterthought I should have done it before I glued it down but I glued on the celebrate die cut and then I placed the cake above it and I started to add some sequins but then I changed my mind and I opted to go with the glitter enamel dots and I just put it in the two top corners of that pink rectangle and then to finish it off I added some glitter to the flames and this is card number eight. For card nine, since there's a lot of white space on the sketch, I wanted to have a textured panel, but I didn't think the embossing folder design would work well with this particular sketch. So I wanted to share this technique that I learned using a scoreboard. You'll take your background panel and you'll add some low tack adhesive on the back so that it won't move on your board and you'll place it at an angle and try to line up the opposite corners along the same score line and then you'll score along each of the lines which are about an eighth of an inch apart to give a diagonal strap design. This gives a card with a lot of white space a little bit more interest and I used the pink and purple tiny polka dot patterns for these pieces. I glued all of the layers down but instead of using a strip or a layer, I decided to cut one eighth of an inch strips just to glue down the sides of that pink polka dot piece. And then for the square, of course, I had to use scraps to keep it level because there's several layers there. And instead of using the banner, that is called for on the sketch I decided to use the celebrate word die cut and I placed a cupcake above that and then I finished off this card with some glitter enamel dots and I added the stickles glitter glue to the top of the cupcake and this is card number nine Now for card number 10, this one is super simple and fast to make. You'll just align the two pattern paper pieces together and then place a quarter inch strip along the seam once those are glued down. And I glued down the sentiment that says happy birthday that was stamped in teal. I glued that along the seam toward the top and then I placed the cupcake above that and then I finished this off with some stickles glitter glue on that frosting and this is card number 10. For card 11 this one is also simple you just glue down the layers and the pattern paper strips you want to glue them down equal distance apart from the edges and there is a lot of white space on this one too but instead of using an embossed panel like I did for the others with a lot of white space I decided to place some matching colored flat sequins in the white areas around the celebrate die cut of course I popped that up with some foam tape to give it a little bit more interest but I tried to pick out the pale purple and the pale blue sequins and I just kind of scattered them about and I really like how this one turned out. This is card number 11. Now for card 12 I used a strip of that extra pattern paper that I had from earlier that has the celebrate words all over it and I layered that onto a purple strip of cardstock. I used another white panel with the diagonal stripes that was made to look like it was embossed for the background that I've made with my scoreboard and I glued the pieces down Again, I used scraps to keep it all level. Now, I originally planned to use the tall pink present with the bow that you see there <laughs> laying on my glass mat. But once I placed everything down, I realized that it was just a little bit too skinny. So I swapped that out for the fatter present. <laughs> 
and I glued down the strip that says celebrate and then I decided to color the ribbon on the present the ribbon and the bow with a purple Copic marker and I used BV02 it matched that purple perfectly and then I just decided to leave the rest of the present white since it had the white background and I popped this up with some foam tape now I typically like to have layers or at least some stickers to break up patterns that are next to each other so I added these super skinny teal wavy sticker strips along all of the edges of the plaid piece and these are from love from Lizzie and then I added some glitter to the bow on top to finish it off and this is card number 12 for card 13 I decided to use the star stencil that comes in the kit this is a large stencil that can be used on many different sized cards I have a white panel that measures three and three quarter inches by five inches and I've placed some low tack tape on the back that's folded over on itself to hold it in place on my glass mat and then I tape the stencil down on top and because I'm finally using one of the tiny polka dot patterns in blue I wanted to bring out more blue with the stencil so I used some blue lunar paste and I applied it with my spatula and scraper until I had an even thin layer of paste over the whole panel now I realize this paste doesn't come in the kit but it matched perfectly and I really wanted to use this stencil but you could achieve a similar look by applying some blue ink through the stencil with a brush or sponge applicator I haven't used paste in so long so this was a lot of fun and I just love all the shine so after letting that panel completely dry I glued down all of the pieces according to the sketch and then for the center rectangle piece I opted to use another piece of that celebrate pattern paper since it has all of the colors on it including the blue and it would help tie together the purple and so I used some holographic sticker strips along the edges and then I place the rectangle on top and this finishes off card number 13 now for the last two and since these are pretty much the same I'm going to show them both here so you can see those diagonal plaid pieces that I cut out earlier and how they are placed on each of the cards for card 14 the plaid piece goes on the top and then a solid color goes below that and then there's a quarter inch strip to separate the two and of course I used pink for that I used several die cuts to decorate this one and I added some stickles glitter glue as finishing touches and then for card 15 it's the same process except the plaid paper goes on the bottom I used the colorful cake image on the top left corner I popped this up with some foam tape and I used a die cut sentiment to the right of that and I finished off this card with the three glitter enamel dots in pink as it's shown on the sketch and this is the last card card number 15 Here are all 15 of the cards again. I'd love to know which one is your favorite down in the comments section. I just love this birthday themed kit, especially the color palette. I'd like to thank Pink and Maine for sending me the kit to play with, and I'm super excited to be a part of the design team for the Crafty Courtyard kits. I had so much fun making these cards, and it really didn't take me that long. Go ahead and order your kit today before they're gone. I'd also like to invite you to join in the challenge. It's a lot of fun and you'll have a great set of coordinating cards plus a chance to win some amazing prizes. Now challenge nine ends on March 31st, but a new one will begin on April 1st. If you enjoyed this video, I'd love it if you'd give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you're not already a subscriber. I appreciate you watching this video and I hope to see you again soon. Have a wonderful day.